Today I wanted to talk about how the Big Bang Cosmic Microwave Background Theory is false. And there's a new paper out that falsifies it in even more detail. But I wanted to go into some of the background so that you can see that it was already false even before this new data came out. So the thing about that's really interesting about the cosmic microwave background is that we have this perfect or nearly perfect black body radiation spectrum at 2.7 Kelvin. And the perfection of it is really problematic for any theory that you might come up with to deal with the cosmic microwave background, any hypothesis. Because there's no redshift. If it was redshifted in this image in my direction, then you would have a smearing of the spectrum. It wouldn't be this perfect black body radiation. So we don't know how we have the spectrum with no redshift. It's a big problem. And if you want to say that the microwave background is coming from everywhere in the universe all at once, we should see redshift. So it can't be. So in the, the Big Bang model, they try to deal with this by saying that it only happened a point in time in the past, everywhere, so that it comes from every direction, and it's highly redshifted by z equals 1100, 1100. So a huge amount of redshift to get it all the way down to the microwave. So we have this perfect redshift everywhere with the Earth in the middle. And that's a big problem for the Big Bang Theory, which is a Doppler redshift that's caused by the expansion of the universe in the Big Bang model but galaxies and galactic clusters aren't expanding. I'm not expanding. There are huge walls and voids throughout the universe. So expansion is going to be highly irregular. So you're not going to have a perfect redshift model where the cosmic microwave background is the same in all directions. It doesn't work with the Big Bang expansion model. And then you have the stupid idea that Earth is in the middle of the universe. As I mentioned in a previous video, if your theory requires that Earth be in the middle of the universe, it's a crackpot theory. You need to figure out a way why all the data is the same in all directions without saying that the Earth is in the middle of the universe. Because that's not a good assumption to be making if you're a scientist. So as I said, the Big Bang model fails based on the redshift not working and the Earth-centered model not being a good idea. So that tells us that the cosmic microwave background is a local phenomenon. That it's coming from our local region of space where there isn't a lot of redshift going on. And now there's a paper out that is proving it, or at least giving us a real strong hint and telling us that we need to be following up on this. And what this paper looked at was it looked at the large galaxies in our local area, around 60 megaparsecs, around 200 billion light years. And so what they found was if you look at the density of galaxies, about 8.5 kiloparsecs in size, uh, somewhat smaller than the microwave, uh, the Milky Way galaxy, but, but not too tiny, and that the distribution of galaxies was the same in appearance as the map of the microwave background from the Planck satellite. And then they did an approximation saying, well, what if we have a little bit of redshift? Now, there is some redshift, but it's, 
in the micro Kelvin range compared to the 2.7 Kelvin temperature. So 100,000 times smaller, 10,000 to 100,000 times less than the temperature. So it's, it's a tiny amount of redshift. And if they do an approximation of these large galaxies causing redshift, they end up getting a map that looks a lot like the Planck map. And then they looked at the quadrupole, which is somewhat similar, and the octopole, same thing, somewhat similar, and then the L4 and L5 below that, and you end up, the 4 and 5 maps look nearly identical when it comes to these sorts of approximations. So it gives us a real strong hint that it's the galaxies, it's the local matter density that's responsible for the distribution of energy that we see from the Planck satellite. Which again, it's all within 200 million years of us, very local and very low redshift area. So, yes, the cosmic microwave background is a local phenomenon. Now, we don't understand what the mechanisms are, wh where does the cosmic microwave background comes from, what black body is radiating it, and I'll talk about theories about that in another video, but I'll say briefly that characteristic lines from the atoms or molecules don't make black body spectra. So it has to come from a real black body. It has to be a bunch of atoms or molecules together. So we also don't know how is it redshifted, what's the redshift interaction. There are some models that people have worked on, but again, they're speculative at this point. So we have a lot to learn, and we also need to know how the more distant cosmic microwave background, assuming it is produced everywhere, is absorbed so we don't see it. So there's a lot going on. You have, you're producing it, we're absorbing it, we're redshifting it, and we have to figure out all those things and get it to fit the Planck spectra. There's a lot of questions and a lot of physicists need to work on this. So the Big Bang cosmic microwave background theory has been, in my opinion, falsified by the new data. Although when people rework this model, we'll, we'll see. We do need confirmation to make sure they didn't manipulate the data in some bad way, but I don't think they did. So if you like this video, please like it, share, and subscribe. I'm trying a brand new Rode microphone on a boom for the first time, so let me know if the sound quality is better. And if you'd like to learn more about my research, I have books for sale on my quantum field theory and particle theory work that I've done. And a thanks to my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters. You bought the microphone. And thanks for watching.